Hey guys, this is Austin. I'm playing Helheim in the Spectator game that's presently underway. Um, if you're looking at this some point in the future, it's a four-point, uh, four-player game. Um, it's a veterans game. I'm probably the least veteran of the players. Um, I have been playing for a little over a year. I've gotten quite a few wins, um, but I don't have the same breadth of experience as some of the other players, probably. The game is being played with CBM 1.94. There's no other mods. So let's jump in with the um, kind of nation design that I chose here. And this isn't the map we're playing. I'm just using kind of a random map to get into the design tools. Also, mine's a little bit sluggish sometimes because I'm actually playing from an SD card for reasons not worth going into at this point. As I said, I'm Helheim. One of the um, interesting things about this game is that the... Um, magic research is set to easy so it'll go twice as fast it creates some oddities in the game the fact that it's only a four player game also creates some oddities so i put that in i kind of kept these things in mind when choosing my pretender design although it's worth noting at the end of the day that i recently won a veterans game with ea hellheim with almost the exact same pretender design and approach um so some of this is certainly that I'm going to talk about is certainly my own personal preferences and the way I tend to look at things. I just about always take some sort of a rainbow pretender. Um, I like the magic diversity and quite frankly I'm a little bit of a coward and I don't want to take a super combatant that I'm going to send out to risk getting killed. Uh, something like a phoenix might work for me sometime. I really want to try it in a couple games but I haven't. Um, sometimes I'll also take a, a non-rainbow if I am doing some sort of a blessed design, which I'm really not in this game. Um, I love the crone. I love her lots and lots. I especially love her four miscellaneous slots and can live with her lack of body slots. Um, as Helheim, in fact, she's got some nature and um, astral is nice. Uh, the death I don't care about quite as much. Um, you know, I considered a couple other approaches. Ultimately, though, um, on this game, in large part, because, as I mentioned earlier, because it is easy magic, magic research, and for some other reasons I'm going to go into in a bit, I chose the Great Sage. Um, he's a normal-sized human, normal human chassis. He's only got two paths instead of the Crones 3. He costs 10 instead of the Crones 5. He doesn't have the extra slots. But what he does have, though, is 19 research, whereas the Crone only has 5. Um, and he's got the Astral, which is nice. Um, you know, you can kind of boost that up, or um, depending on how, if you were wanting to boost that up, um, you might care about the Astral being there if you were looking for a big Astral Bless for some reason. I'm not in this game. Um, what I want is lots and lots of pads, and um, so he'll give me lots and lots of research and provide uh, quite a bit of diversity. This is an early age game, so you can often find indies that will provide a lot of the diversity for you. So I'm sometimes a little less picky on an EA game, um, especially with things around nature and some, um, some of the other paths that are really easy to get early age. Um, however, for the build that I sort of know I'm going to take already, he will be taking some nature and he'll, be, he'll, he'll probably work out fine. Um, oh, I should also mention, I'm actually doing this while we have turned 30 to the players. So... It's a little bit interesting in that I get the kind of wisdom of having played this for 30 turns and I can speak a little bit to what works out or what doesn't or what I wish I might have done differently. But I also lose a little of the, you know, kind of where I was when I was making it. So maybe as we go through this, and I haven't really rebuilt this pretender um, until just now, so I may end up kind of dawdling about a bit trying to find exact... Um, um, build I have and it may be a little bit difficult for me, for me to remember the exact reasons that I did them. Um, the first thing is that I should mention is I'm taking him as an awake uh, pretender. The research points that he provides I want right off the bat turn one. It's part of my strategy to get up to speed as quickly as I possibly can. So um, and by up to speed I mean uh, get some early research goals knocked out to enable some of my game plan a little bit more quickly. So I need him awake. That's kind of his purpose is to knock out research pretty much turn one. Um, for my Dominion, um, I need him to be, I'd like him to be a six. I believe I ended up with him as a six. We'll find out here in a moment. Um, when it comes to doing heat scales, well, let me back up. 
so Dominion 6. Um, I want a high Dominion, at least a Dominion 6, um, just so I can push out my scales. It's going to be a little bit less critical in this game. I bet I ended up with 5. Um, I like luck a lot, and in games where I take 3 luck, which I did not do here, then I always try to take a, much, a higher Dominion, at least a 6, just so I can push the scales out and get the benefits of luck. Um, but I'm probably less concerned about it here because I can Blood Sack if I need to. I have a Dominion... Uh, a Dominion Strength 5, but I also have an Awake Pretender, so I can probably push my scales out pretty well. Um, Helheim has some fairly expensive units, so I'm going to want to try to get my uh, money situation from being a complete disaster. Um, both uh, order and productivity obviously affect that. Growth does a little bit. You know, there's there's um, temperature scales, um, luck, and then uh, drain. You know what I'm actually going to do? Let's do the magic first. I'm going to change gears just a little bit here. Um, I know with the what I have available in Helheim on my re commanders that are nationally um, available by default, I will be hurting for Astral, so I want four points there. I'll have lots of death, um, but I'm, I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, I want four points of nature, uh, four points of earth. I, I like to do fours with Helheim. I end up doing a lot of uh, minor blesses. Um, I've actually run out of points here, so um, I should probably go do my scales, I guess. This video is suddenly all over the place. So let's go back to scales, sorry. So if I'm doing um, a Dom 5, which I suspect I probably am, I'd really like to have a point of order. Um, like I say, my, my, I'd like to have three points of order, but I'm not, simply not going to have enough points for everything. Um, I can. Uh, my units are fairly expensive. Um, I'm going to need a lot of income, but I may not be able to actually swing that. My resources aren't as big of a deal, really. Um, I do have some somewhat high resource units, but nothing outrageous. Um, one place I always look for an opportunity to make up some design points is with my uh, temperature scales. Um, Helheim, by default, wants cold one. I usually go... You know, ideally you get a nation that wants cold 2 or 3 just for lots of points um, or heat 2 or 3. Um, in this case, you get the cold one for free. I'm going cold 2 for a couple reasons. One is that there's some, uh, you know, Cetus is in this game with all of the cold-blooded units that they feature. The cold scales are good for me. Plus, even though you do get a loss of income on cold 2, during the summer, a lot of your provinces are going to end up being cold 1, and if I'm only Dom 5 anyway, I'm probably not pushing my my Dominion out that strong, so I probably will be pretty okay with the income part of this. Um, I am planning on blood hunting a lot, so as a result, I'm going to uh, want, I'd love to have growth 3, especially in regular uh, CBM 194 because of the, uh, not even the income, but the growth Almost getting a full percent of growth is pretty outrageous. Um, I don't have the design points for it, and this is a shorter game probably because there's only four players, so some of the benefits of growth three go away. I'm primarily looking at growth one just as a means to make my blood hunting slightly more sustainable, and you know, this little bit of growth, a little bit of income are both also useful. Um, I'm going to go luck one because, um, like I say, I'm kind of a whore for luck scales. Um, I just... Uh, played some games with Misfortune, it doesn't work out very well for me. Um, and Luck 1 and Order 1 gives you a decent number of gold events, and even though you get uh, the minus 5% random on Order, uh, I'm still pretty alright with that. The wacky thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go Drain 2. And uh, this goes back a little bit to the actual Pretender chassis design, and choosing the Pretender with, uh, you know, the, the, the huge research bonus. Um, with easy magic in this game, I can offset an awful lot of my drain deficiencies with the uh, with the Awake Pretender. Although, as I said, I did this recently in a regular game with regular settings, and it was a bigger seven or eight player bet game with um, basically this almost this exact same build, with, with certainly with drain scales and the Awake Great uh, Great Sage. So this isn't kind of a you know tricked up build I'm doing just for this game, but I think that the settings on this game make it even more appealing. I think so. Ended up with basically two two ended up with two negative scales, being ultimately at the end of the thing. Um, <clears throat> you know I've got a one negative on sloth and two on cold, which only counts as one for me, and then the two drain is basically where I picked up the points I need to finish my magic. 
so going back to magic um, like I said I kind of want to have a lot of small um, a lot of small blesses um, is Helheim the reason for that I, I guess I'll skip ahead just a little bit one of the things I'm really going to want to do is be able to raid effectively with my with my bands um, so these blesses in general are really good for that a lot of the vets um, <laughs> You ask them what bless should I take for, and then enter anything, and the answer is Earth Nine. And Earth Nine is is a fine bless; it's solid. There's their vets; they know what they're talking about. There's good reasons for it, but I almost never have the design points to to do that. I almost always do have the design points for Earth Four. Um, the Earth Four gets me two points, as it tells us down here. It gets me two points of re reinvigoration. My raiders are usually running at a uh, encumbrance of three. So I am running, and that doesn't give me neutral um, fatigue, neutral and uh, yeah, neutral fatigue with the reinvigoration. But for hitting province defenses, it's fine. And if I'm hitting something bigger, I can give them a, a belt. I have dwarves that can uh, forge those on the cheap. So the Earth Four is good. Um, it's also you know the more points uh, you have on your pretender both in terms for me of getting research but also just for diversity uh, is valuable although in this game um, you know I have an awful lot of uh, nationals that have earth the next one that I really care about is actually nature and this is a lot of folks think this is odd um, I pretty much always when I'm playing one of the glamour nations one of the air powers I pretty much always want na uh, nature 4 primarily because I'm very dependent on mist form for my rating and your guys are just going to take some dings when they're misformed. It's one point at a time, and my guys have about 15 health. My raiders do, and they'll get hit sometimes against the big province defense or against a bunch of uh, nationals that aren't really supported. They can get hit 15 times over the course of that combat, even with their high defense. But they, um, but the one point, and that's really all it gives. Usually, one or two points of, reinv of uh, not reinvigoration, regeneration that I get from my nature bless pretty much offsets that so they um, basically it, it helps a little bit with afflictions and whatnot but um, but really it, it has more to do with um, keeping them keeping them out of trouble um, as far as running out of health the water bless I, I don't always do water for even on the glamour nations um, I have no national water units they're not terribly difficult to find some water one guys early age um, but I really want three at least to be able to make a um, um, what's it called the the robe of the sea the the water booster that you can do with construction two I believe that um, only requires three water um, and for some other reasons uh, you know I'd really like to be able to start with at least water three and if I'm going water three I kind of feel like in this case at least I've got the points I'm going to go water four. Um, that gives me the extra two points of defense, which for my Raiders is great. Um, it's probably, quite frankly, a little bit of a luxury. But um, I'm going to go ahead and go Water 4 um, on this guy. And then the last thing is the um, Astral. The, the blessed part of it, it's Magic Resistance plus 1. I'm really probably, again, being a little bit wasteful here. I'd be just fine with Astral 3, honestly. Um, I obviously want to be able to forge Astral Rings. Uh, one of the other players in their write-up was talking about the importance of that and how they were concerned that they might not be able to do that. Um, you can do that just fine with Astral 3 as long as you've got the Earth. But I do find, for whatever reason, the Astral 4 makes it slightly, well, whatever reason, it, the Astral 4 makes it slightly easier because you don't have to worry about having the Earth, which I have anyway, but you can avoid um, forging the Crystal Coin, which saves you, you know, a Pretender turn, which on my Pretender, with the amount of research he's producing, is important. And it's also, you know, 20 extra gems um, to make the crystal coin to get into your astral rings. Um, so I kind of just like doing four. The one point of magic resistance is nice, I suppose, but really not that big of a factor. So I'm kind of being um, a little bit wasteful here, maybe, and this is a little bit of a luxury. The uh, final point that I'm actually going to spend is death. I have lots of death mages. I'm spending this here almost entirely just because the uh, what I don't have much of, I have one point of fire on my pretender. I have some dwarves that will get one point of fire and we'll also have some uh, some death paths. But I'm, I'm taking this primarily um, for the ability to make the um, um, skulls of fire. I believe they're called the little uh, boosters. In hindsight, I was probably a little bit asleep at the wheel when I did this. My dwarves, actually, the ones that have fire, also have... Um, death. 
so they can make them. So I probably didn't have any real reason to put the point in death, and I could have saved the point, maybe put it in blood, which I, at this point I would rather have. I chose not to point, put any points into blood, primarily because um, I can empower into it if I need to, um, and I probably am not going to be using my pretender for much in the way of blood. Um, at least that was my thought at design time. In hindsight, um, I probably will use it a little bit. I haven't yet. I haven't empowered it um, turn 30, and I haven't empowered him yet, but I, I may at some point here soon. Um, I chose not to put any points into air. I don't care about the bless. I have a lot of national air mages, and unless you're going to go four points, um, it's really not that valuable to go into air. Um, in hindsight, I still wouldn't go into air, but I did have a lot more difficult time than I was expecting uh, getting any of my nationals who have air three without getting very, very lucky. Air three is the most I'm going to get by default. And um, I had a harder time than I was expecting getting to air four. Um, but there's really no answer to it here. I'm certainly not spending the points on my pretender. So these are the paths I went with. Um, we can see I still have 46 points left. So that tells me that I failed in recreating my pretender build. So I'm going to take a look over here. I imagine I don't have that. I imagine I'm productivity zero. Um, I'll verify that in a little bit, and if that's incorrect, I'll come back and correct. So I um, have an awake, great sage. Magic is um, four points in water, earth, astral, nature. Um, admitting that the water four is a little bit of a luxury, the astral four is a little bit of a luxury. I could have certainly gone something like that and had a lot more design points which a lot of folks would tell you probably correctly would be a better way to go um, but I'm just being a little bit a little bit lazy and a little bit um, I don't know I guess lazy is really just the best word on the deal um, the point in death also shouldn't be there um, totally don't need that the point in fire I got by default and then for my dominion I'm uh, Dom 5 which I can live with because for the reasons I outlined earlier Order 1 gives me a little income. The Cold 2 gives me extra design points, creates more Cold Dominion, which is good considering some of the folks I'm playing. And the income loss really won't affect me. The Growth offsets my Blood Hunting luck because I love it. And uh, the Drain I'll get to a little bit more later on, but is being offset by easy, in large part by Easy Magic Research and also by um, the Pretender Design. So I've gone on here probably longer than I should, so we'll cut this one short. Uh, well, not short. We'll stop now, and we'll pick up maybe looking at the nation itself in the first couple turns um, with the next one.